Uh, hello, it's our great pleasure to host at the Faculty of Management a visiting professor, Dr. Sang Rim Choi from Hanyang University from Seoul in Korea. Hello. Uh, Dr. Choi is an expert in finance, uh, financial management, international finance and mm -hmm. international business with vast, uh, both, academic and also, uh, both academic experience and also experience in corporate environment. He was uh, a lecturing and a research fellow at Fulbright Foundation at the United States had several teaching and also research appointments as a visiting scho scholar at several universities in United States and also in China and was also active in consulting uh, to the government and many business uh, enterprises in Korea. Uh, Dr. Cho is also a master of Kendo and enjoys meditation and is a regular sponsor to some charitable organizations including the World Vision and UNICEF. Uh, at the Faculty of uh, Management, we have a pri privilege to, to host Dr. Choi as a visiting lecturer. Uh, he uh, is involved in three courses at our faculty, uh, Global Business Strategy, International, Fina International Financial Relations course, and uh, in the course uh, related to financial institutions. Uh, being an expert uh, in the field of international business and international finance, we would like to use this opportunity uh, to talk with Mr. Choi uh, regarding uh, how to do business in Asia and how to do business in Korea. Uh, we are all aware that uh, Asian economies are growing rapidly. They have achieved tremendous economic success in the past years. And uh, we can for sure say that Asia uh, is, or let's say in that way that this century is the century of Asian countries. Uh, according to economic forecasts, uh, by 2040, Asia, uh, Asian economies should present around half of global GDP and around 40% of uh, consumption, uh, consumption uh, talking globally, of course. Uh, at the same time, uh, as far as we all know, Asia, also for European countries, also for Slovenia, presents a big business potential but at the same time it has some differences, some, it poses some challenges in relation to cultural environment, to attitudes, to, to values. There are quite big differences between Asia, Asian countries and European countries. And today we are going in this short, um, uh, short conversation, touch upon different aspects, both economic and also cultural aspects of how to do business in Asia and uh, in Korea. And let's start first with South Korea, as you come from South Korea. And uh, could you please give us some details, insight on Korea's uh, economy and also insights how to do business in Korea? Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you, Siana, for the introduction. And I'm pleased to have this opportunity. Thank you. <coughs> uh, as you know, South Korea is a small country like Slovenia and is even divided into two parts. Uh, <clears throat> the area of South Korea is about five times of Slovenia and the population is more dense. It's about 25 times Slovenian population. Um, in terms of FD, uh, GDP, Korea is ranked somewhere between 10th and 12th, depending on the survey year for the last several years. Um, <clears throat> this is really a surprising thing uh, for a small country like Korea to rank in, in that high level. Uh, it also <clears throat> was devastated by the Korean War, which ended in 1953. And at that time, we had nothing, um, no capitals or no expertise in any technology or anything. But after, <clears throat> after 53, we had a poor living conditions. And then from 65, 1965, the government started to <clears throat> develop an economic development plan. And uh, since then, 
almost three decades, for 30 years, Korea <clears throat> had a surprising growth. Um, for the 30 years, about uh, double digits every year, higher than 10% of GDP growth and 20% uh, of export growth every year. So now the country has moved from developing country to an advanced industrialized country. Um, <clears throat> today, the, the economy is operating in a uh, market, free market uh, system, and it is very open, and one of the probably most dynamic uh, economy in the world. We are, Korean people are so proud of it. <laughs> uh, but of course we have many problems, but that is probably the general picture of the Korean economy, I guess. And how was this develop economic development? What were the main triggers? How it was this possible that you yeah. reached two-digit uh, GDP yeah. growth? It's, it's really surprising. Many people call it as a miracle because it is, it is really a miracle because the country started with, as I said, uh, little natural endowment, little uh, capital formation, uh, little entrepreneurship or managerial heritage. Um, so they have to start from the scratch. Um, many things contributed to the development. I think probably the most important factor is formation of human capital. Uh, in human capital form, formed by uh, high emphasis on education. Korean people uh, regard education very highly, very importantly. Mm. So, uh, people worked very hard mm. and the, the formation of human capital was coupled with very shrewd government policies. Government, uh, uh, government officials were very clever and they developed very uh, appropriate uh, economic policies. They began at the, at the beginning, they began with uh, export-led growth and they, of course, Naturally, because we have nothing, they have to begin with labor-intensive uh, light industries. And then moved to, probably in mid-1980s, moved toward uh, heavy industry and petrochemical industries. We developed, started to develop the heavy and the petrochemical industries. And made a big success. Now, I think <clears throat> the gravity is moving toward service industries. Uh, we see a lot of fast-growing technology firms as well as very creative, uh, creative sectors like um, dramas, K-pops, song and dance groups, mm -hmm. and uh, game, video games uh, in many high-tech industries. Uh, it's very active these days. So service industries are the most important at this time in your economy, by, the, by structure? Yes. Um, so this the, is the main business sector? Uh, yeah. Uh, many sectors, I can say. Uh, Korea ranks fifth largest exporters and tenth largest importers. And uh, mm, the most strong area of export is semiconductors, uh, mobile phones, and uh, ICT items like telecommunications, and cars, shipbuilding, uh, and uh, household items like TVs. They are the most uh, strong areas. And uh, these items are mostly produced by the large uh, conglomerate mm -hmm. business firms. But now, slowly emerging the, the high-tech industries. So we'll have chances to talk about it later. So, mm -hmm. 
Are there any new business trends emerging in Korea? Yeah. Korean firms mostly make good use of electronic and uh, digital equipments and systems. Mm -hmm. So they take full advantage of uh, advantage of the new trend. And uh, e-commerce is also a very strong uh, sector. And um, what about any new trends? Do you see any changes in last yeah, uh, in last changes, years? New uh, business trends? Yeah, the new, new trends we see uh, among the big conglomerate firms, they are trying to uh, diversify their markets and business partners because they have been uh, concentrating on a limited number of countries like China, uh, United States, and Japan. Uh, that is their problem. They understand that. They try to now diversify more markets and diversify their business partners, uh, particularly to the EU countries. Um, so I see uh, that's a good chance uh, to have a developing new business relationships between Korea and EU companies. They are trying to diversify their relationship with uh, new partners because Mm -hmm. because they fear, particularly uh, recently, they feel threat from the uh, political, uh, political pressures coming from the United States and China. Having the conflict between these two countries uh, put heavy pressure on these big corporations. So they want to diversify their funds, their business, uh, to avoid the pressures. And at the same time, <clears throat> besides the big corporations, uh, as I said, new emerging, uh, very fast growing uh, venture firms in technology and uh, creative sectors. Uh, I, know <clears throat> I know an ideal group named uh, AB6. It's surprising to see them when they they uh, marketed a new video, uh, video game, video song. Uh, at the first 10 days, they have recorded 20 million views <laughs> of their That's new uh, publications. It's really surprising. It's beyond our imagination. So these changes are very new to Korean economy, which has been for long dominated by the big corporations. So we are moving from big corporations to, let's say, smaller businesses taking also an important role in, in your economy. What about the downsides? Uh, what would you say are the downsides of Korean oh, yes, economy and yeah, firms? There are many problems, I can say. Uh, first of all, I, as I said, uh, limited number of economic partners. Uh, we rely too heavily on a few small, few countries, small number of countries. That is uh, a problem. Also, as an economy, uh, <clears throat> domestic economy, the economy heavily relies on a limited number of uh, big conglomerates, which is called as channels. Uh, the policies try to diversify it and give more chances to small and medium-sized firms. But these small and medium firms also rely very heavily to the big corporations. So it was not easy to, to give them chances. But as I said, new emerging sectors in uh, technology and creative sectors, they alleviate these issues these days. So I think it is becoming a less and less important issue these days. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's uh, good for the whole economy. If we now move from South Korea to, to Asia, yeah. uh, so we all know that main, many Asian yes. countries have, yes. uh -huh. have recorded a tremendous economic success. What do you think were the main contributing factors for this economic success? Yeah. And do you believe this trend will also continue in the future? Is this trend sustainable? 
I think probably the government <coughs> was the most important driver of economic uh, prosperity in Asian countries. Um, behind all the success of these Asian countries, economic success, <coughs> you always see the very, very clever government policies uh, with a very strong intention to, to increase their economic growth. And uh, not only their intention is strong and they initiate the growth, but also they coordinate with business firms for the market development. So like if you see Singapore is the representative case, and not only Singapore, but Korea, China, and uh, Japan, all are the same. Maybe you can take an example of uh, Vietnam. Vietnam, when mm, they first introduced uh, so-called doi moi policy, which is opening uh, policy in mid-1980s, the market did not respond very actively. They, the market had to wait until mid-1980s, about 10 years later, when the government started to uh, shift their policies to more market-friendly policies. And then the market started to react very, very actively. The market uh, became, the firms and markets reacted very actively and they started to attract foreign investment. Now, Vietnam is growing very fast. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very bright. So that example uh, illustrates very well about the role of the government policies. Uh, <clears throat> besides government policies, maybe I can say uh, people's, people's desire to <laughs> increase their standard of living, to become rich, to run away from the poorness. Uh, most of the Asian countries are under heavy pressure of um, pressure of becoming rich and uh, the societies are very competitive. The competition comes from the peer groups, peer groups most of the cases. Uh, they are the severe competition. They want to acquire uh, recognition of their friends, their peers, their parents and their neighbors. Um, and when they succeed, when they succeed then they are compensated with heavy remunerations, not only in terms of pecuniary things, but also with the respect and the recognition of their friends and their peer groups. So they have a very strong desire to succeed, to improve their themselves, their lives. So this strong desire of the people uh, has contributed a lot to the economic success. Um, what about I think, excuse me, I think, for example, in Korea, uh, people had a very strong spirit called can-do spirit. I don't know, you have heard of it. Uh, there's nothing impossible uh, if we unite and we cooperate to do anything. There's nothing we cannot do it. That's the can-do spirit. Um, so people are very brave, did not uh, hesitate to challenge new things. And uh, <clears throat> fortunately, we had uh, some business heroes like the founders of Samsung Group, uh, Hyundai Group, SK Group, and LG Groups, people like them, like uh, Jung Ju Young, the founder of Heavy uh, Hyundai Group. He used to say, uh, don't say no to me <laughs> before you try try it. You have to try it before you say, you decide yes or no. He was that challenging, that kind of spirits, can do spirits, that helped a lot in Korean economic development. I think that is not an exception. There are a lot of uh, similar examples in developing Asian countries. So that strong desire is really a multi motivation driving the society, the economy forward, I think. 
and that's a very there may be may be many uh, other factors, but uh, probably the most important things I can think of. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a very good advice. You have to try it. Uh, what about uh, so-called Asian value? Is this uh, yes. also one mm, yes. uh, factor contributing to contributing to economic development? I think Asian value uh, contributed to a lot to the economic development of Asian countries. Asian value itself is uh, is a political model that has been developed to express the elements. Uh, common to Asian countries uh, in terms of society, culture, and uh, systems, political systems. It puts a very heavy emphasis on uh, in loyalty to the family and loyalty and respect to the seniors and uh, put preference on common wealth, uh, wealth of the, of the society rather than the individual, individual or personal things. So mm, it emphasizes a lot about uh, mm, harmony of the society or harmony of the organizations. Um, in that sense, it contributed a lot to the, to the efficient operation of the business firms and op efficiency of the execution of the uh, government policies. Um, but on the other hand, it has it produced a lot of problems too, because mm, it emphasizes respect to the seniors, uh, to the authority. Uh, people are usually not willing or come front to to say what they really want to say. They hesitate or they stay back. Uh, Another important problem may be the role of the female in the society and in the business. Uh, that is one Asian value which is actually deteriorating the economic development. Still, you see in almost all the Asian countries, except China, China is the exception. That is, uh, that is the heritage of cultural revolution in China. But besides China, all the Asian countries, you see very limited role of females. That's very unfortunate. Yeah, very unfortunate. With their active uh, participation to the economy, I think the growth will be much accelerated. Uh, you have been living also in United States and also in some other countries. Uh, what would you say are the peculiarities of the Asian uh, yeah. attitude compared to, to Western? Uh, uh, there must be many, but uh, <laughs> let me take some examples. When people, even boss, bosses, they give instructions and uh, comments to their subordinates or their colleagues, mm, what they say, their instruction is not clear and straightforward. They have a tendency to talk round and round, uh, not, to, not to hurt or not to, not to make the, the other people lose their faces. Saving face is very important in Asian society, in Asian values too. So that is probably one thing uh, that I can take. Another example, maybe asking questions, is the same. Particularly the subordinates, when they try to ask uh, questions to clarify about something to their superiors or bosses, first they hesitate uh, not to be seen as a challenging to the authority of their seniors or to the boss. Um, that is another example, probably. And if you come to Asia and have a meeting with a group of people, always the boss talk first. And most of the time, only the boss talks. Other people do not participate. They hesitate to participate because of uh, the fear that it might hurt the boss emotions or may make the boss lose faces or something like that. 
in office relationship, uh, in people in Korea like to have a very close, like family relationship with the people that they work with. And if the partner, <clears throat> the other party does not uh, reciprocate, they feel offended. So it might be quite different from Western style. Another example, hierarchies. <clears throat> In Western organizations, hierarchies are flattened uh, and have less levels in hierarchies. And people like leaders um, <clears throat> try to make feel fair, flattened by saying that like um, <clears throat> every opinion counts while they say uh, we are in the same boat or something like that. But in Korean organizations uh, have diverse hierarchies and each individual should know exactly uh, where they belong to and what they are supposed to do. Um, so that contributes to the harmony of the organization but uh, it's not good for the innovations or creativeness or challenging to a new opportunities. Uh, mm. But are there any Still, differences between? Let me, yes, let me add this. These traditional Asian values are now challenged by young people who are educated with Western style systems. Mm -hmm. where many of them have been studied in foreign countries where people exposed to Western style movies or media and other things. And young people have very different system of values and attitudes. So the traditional values in many Asian countries, I think, are challenged. It is very phenomenal in Korea. <clears throat> but from business point of view, can we, we have been talking about Korea, but can we consider it uh, all countries in Asia as a monolithic culture? Mm -hmm. Are there any uh, differences? And how they do understand, how they, uh, how do, what is their understanding uh, of European business partners, of American business partners? So how they, they see, uh, for example, us Westerns? Mm -hmm. You know, Asia is a huge continent and uh, it consists of very diverse cultures and uh, nations. For example, China alone, it consists of 56 different ethnics. Each ethnic have their own cultures and traditions. So it's hard to, <clears throat> it's hard to say um, the Asian values I just mentioned is is common to all the nations, or is common, to, uh, but I just try to to choose only the essence of them. Um, Asia has different social systems from Western cultures, so it is natural that they have um, different attitudes and values. So before having trying to develop a business relationship with the new foreign uh, Asian countries is uh, very helpful to understand Asian values and uh, their way of doing business and try to avoid uh, what they don't like. Um, some countries like Vietnam has a special relationship with European countries. So they will have a better understanding of the European countries. But most of the other Asian countries do not have that kind of historical background. So when they come to Europe for business, they have to pay higher cost of foreignness, higher cost of opportunity, or should take long learning learning curve, learning, learning thing, new things. So I think it is natural to the way to
to reduce it is learning new customs and values. It's the same for the European countries to come to Asian countries too. So that learning differences between the two cultures is interesting by itself, but at the same time, uh, it is useful in doing business too. So. <clears throat> what about language? How important is language so to speak? language of the country in which company representatives come to and uh, what is the meaning in Asia uh, of no, yes, maybe? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> it's a very interesting <laughs> question. Uh, yes in Western culture means uh, it's an agreement uh, and <clears throat> it means that something will be done soon, kind of things. But in Asia, yes means uh, <clears throat> many times, means that I'm listening to what you are saying, uh, no more than that. It's not a promise or an agreement or anything. Also, <clears throat> the way they respond is uh, <clears throat> to what you just said. For example, if you say, Aren't you coming with us? Then, if, if someone says yes, an Asian says yes, it means what you said is right, or I am not coming with you. That is yes. It, in Western countries, it should be no, no, I'm not coming with you. That's the way the Western people say. In Asia, yes, I'm not coming with you. Yes, what you said is right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. So the way the, the same word, even though they know the meaning of the word, is, is used in different ways. Also, uh, Asia, including Korea, is in high context society, meaning that the same thing can differ from context to context. Uh, for example, in companies, job description is not very specific. It's not written in, in detail. In Western business firms, if you go to a, you are a new entrance, you are given a manual or a job description, you read it, you exactly know what you are supposed to do. But in Asian cultures, it's not that specific. Uh, it's very rough. So what each individual employee, they have to learn it by doing, or they have to ask to their seniors or their colleagues to learn what exactly he is supposed to do, what things he is supposed to do, what things he is not supposed to do. He has to learn it over time. So that is the weakness of a high context society. But that lack of transparency, uh, high context thing, it is, can cause a significant problem when it comes to a contract or an agreement between com companies. If you see an agreement or a contract between Asian companies, it's very brief and short. So when something happens, or an accident happens to, to resolve to the contract or agreement, the interpretation can differ very widely. So in making contracts, you have to be very careful to make the contracts and agreement very much in detail, like Western style. So the, the language, um, the understanding yeah. the context, uh, yes. this is very, very much important when uh -huh. starting business in, uh, yeah. in Asia. What about uh, uh, other critical factors to to be successful in starting business in, in Asia. What would be your, uh, let's say, not advice, but yeah. uh, what would you recommend, for example, mm. Western companies to be attentive on when starting business in Asia? It's not easy to develop a new business relationship to every business firm. Uh, if you have a very strong mm. firm-specific advantage, like a very unique technology or something, uh, it's okay, but unless generally it's not easy. But in our context of uh, discussion, 
in Asian business firms, uh, people think trust is very important. Trust and uh, personal relationship is very important. That comes before business interest. So mm, the first thing they like to have with you as a Western firm is having dining and drinking together. <laughs> having having uh, like lunch or supper together over drinks. They, they watch you, your etiquette, your behavior, and your way of thinking, and try to decide whether you can be a friend to him or not. So it is very important, the first dining opportunity is very important. The relationship develops very slowly over time, and they see uh, the Western partner is not trying to take advantage of you. But they are fair. They are. They are trying to help you. Uh, if they know that, then the trust and friendly relationships slowly develop. That takes time. But once it it is established, then they become really good friends to you, and um, sometimes they are ready to help you by introducing some some people in a position that uh, gives help, uh, business or otherwise. So having business relationship, particularly in the long run relationship, is critical in doing business with Asian business firms. And what is the, the current business relationship between uh, Asia, Korea, for uh, example, and um, European Union? I found. Um, Korea is EU's eighth, eighth export destination, and the EU is Korea's third largest destination. So the economic relationship is already established. I'm not satisfied with that uh, level, but I see a great potential to be uh, exploited further uh, if you consider our trend, our trade relationships with China and the United States, there are further uh, potential in improve. But because of the probably physical distance and cultural distance, and historically uh, we had no good opportunity to really come close to each other. But now, since the economy has been globalized, there is a good potential uh, to narrow the gaps. Uh, as I said, Korean big conglomerates, they are, they are uh, desiring, they are willing to diversify their trading partners. Uh, and European countries also need uh, to expand to growing market in Asia. So we can so, expect yeah. in improved, increased uh, business cooperation between the... Um, I think the, the starting point is to find out uh, what we can, we can offer to our partners. As you know very well, uh, in 21st century, the gravity, the, the role of the game in business has sh shifted from pure competition to collaborations. So to be a good collaborating partner, you should have your own competitive edge that your partner does not have, your partner needs. So have to, you have to find out and identify what your competitive advantage really is. And uh, then where it will fit, it will suit to uh, the other partners. I think the traditional strength in European Union countries and newly emerging technologies and strength in Asian countries can combine very well and um, it can be very well uh, coupled with government support too. For example, Korea and EU uh, has an end um, the tariff agreement, NNT, 
NTA, mm -hmm. non tariff uh, agreement, free tariff, uh, free tariff agreement, FTA, I'm FTA, sorry, yes. FTA, mm -hmm. in 2015. Mm -hmm. And that free trade agreement was for EU the first time in Asia. So by the FTA, uh, many many uh, barriers, trade barriers has been eliminated already. The door is open, the red carpet is already placed. So business firms, if they are really searching for their partners in Asian countries, and Asian countries the same, if they really search for the European firms and the opportunities, I think there must be uh, many good chances, yeah. Yeah, we are all optimists. Uh, we are coming to an end of our, of our interview. Uh, is, this, is there anything that you would like to add? Perhaps we didn't mention something which would you like to mention now? Yeah. By the way, I just found uh, EU makes, EU makes uh, surplus and trades, trade, uh, goods trade uh, with Asian countries and they make surplus in service trade with Asian countries. Mm -hmm. So there is a very well, um, they are very well adjusted to the, to the, the other part, what the other party really need. Um, what I found in Slovenia is that the Slovenian economy is very, very solid. Uh, Slovenia has a very well developed manufacturing sector and uh, Korea, Slovenian economy is very well um, in, integrated into the supply chain of the neighboring countries, Western country, Western European countries and Eastern European countries too. So at this time of uh, in supply chain problems, Slovenian role can be expanded, I think. And uh, as I said, Korean business firms are always searching for the new opportunities to diversify. Uh, the relationship can be much improved between two countries. Um, more specifically, uh, probably the Korean um, business firms, because they have strength in uh, electronic, like uh, household items, uh, TVs and refrigerators and many other things. I think they have competitiveness in price in even in Slovenia. And the Slovenian firms also have a lot to offer to Korea. Personally, I found Slovenian food is very tasty and fresh, have competi competitive edge in pricing too. So I think Slovenia has many things to offer to Korean firms. The current situation is not very satisfactory. There are, I, in terms of potentiality and uh, and the global trend of uh, trend of cooperation, the, probably these two business firms from these two countries have a lot of room to to construct an ecosystem to cooperate together. Um, I really hope since I'm here, uh, since I see the real reality of the Slovenian economy, I really hope uh, these two countries have a close relationship in your future. I also hope that uh, in the future our business cooperation will, imp will increase. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully also from based on the insights provided in this interview. Uh, uh -huh. Thank you very much for your cooperation and for all examples and also recommendations how to start business cooperation with Asia and Korean uh, companies. I wish you a good stay here in Slovenia, enjoy our country and also enjoy uh, our faculty. Thank you very much. I enjoyed this interview and I enjoyed all the lives in uh, Slovenia, in Koper. I love this city. Thank you very much.